I had to rescue this little fella before he fell in the canal. Placed him in the hedgerow by the side of the boat where he was quickly attended to by his parent, Robin. Ah. Oh. Today's journey sees us travel the short six miles and four locks from Wolverley up to the beautiful village of Kinver. It's what you might call a tight bend. It's uncertain why this cave was dug out of the sandstone rock by the side of Debdale Lock. Some have suggested that it was used to house horses, but uh, getting them across the lock might have been a bit of an effort. Well, Fran took a walk down here yesterday and noticed that short lawn type cutting up there. And since yesterday, they've hacked this down, which was full of wildflowers. But uh, we obviously like it neat and tidy around these parts. Well, this is a small village called Whittington. Obviously a very well healed place. Absolutely stunning, all the same. Beautiful. Oh dear, all that lovely wildlife and wildflowers been hacked back. For what reason, we don't know. It seems a real shame. You really have to wonder how wide they want the towpath. The path here is perfectly wide enough for bikes, wheelchairs, pushchairs. So why did they trim this edge? And also this edge, but you still can't moor. For people that want to have it mown right down so they can moor easily, this still isn't achieving that. So why have they done this? It just doesn't make any sense. Lovely setting for a house. Look at that, it's beautiful, isn't it? And look at their front garden gates. What a fantastic cottage, a beautiful cottage garden. Wonderful.
steep. It's a little bit steep, we're out of practice. Yeah, I'm huffing and puffing. You don't get a good view. Oh, there you go. You don't get a good view without working no. for it, do you? So, we're off to Kinver Edge. Um, and I think there's some uh, rock houses, stone houses up there as well. I'm not sure that we're going to go around those because it's National Trust and we just wanted to walk really and a view. But um, we've gone out a little bit without preparation. We'll just see what's up there. Beautiful there, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. Well, it was worth the uh, huffing and the puffing to get up here, but the views are absolutely stunning all over the Midland areas, really. Worcestershire, Herefordshire, uh, parts of Wales you can see from here, Shropshire, it's absolutely stunning. It's amazing. And it was apparently 3,000 years ago, there was a hill fault and a whole community up here, and they could obviously see anybody invading for miles and miles around. Um, and it's never been excavated, so I'm on the lookout for ancient stuff. <laughs> But <laughs> other than me. <laughs> We're walking on the ramparts here, 3,000 year old fortress uh, ramparts, so uh, don't know anything about it, do you, Francis? No, apart from while you're up here, if they're coming up here to fight you, you can knock them back down again easily. Yeah. <laughs> Medlar tree. It's a medlar tree. Oh, there's medlars on it. Look. <laughs> I'll tell you, I could so live here. Live in a cave, you've got hazelnuts, apples, everything. Medlars. So, this tree. is a medlar, and medlars look a bit like a spiky apple, but you have to wait for them to rot before you can eat them. You have to bleck them. Bleck them, the and then you is. just you, you actually suck the, the, the rotted goo. juice out of the medlar. Have you ever done it? No. I have once not to be repeated no. <laughs> but there's yellow rattle all over the place isn't there look at this this plant and when the seed pods are ripe they actually rattle in the wind these are not quite there and if you want to create a meadow like this get some yellow rattle because they get rid of all the grass competition and allows you to uh, plant wild flowers and let yeah. wild flowers flourish and it's the first time i've ever seen it and it's everywhere Oh, rhubarb. <laughs> I think they'd notice a few sprigs missing. They might be selling it up at the house. They do sometimes.
difficult to believe that people actually lived in these cave dwellings. But the earliest records of people living here was 1777. Now owned by the National Trust, it became a tourist attraction in the early 20th century. Having no running water or electricity, the last occupants moved out of these dwellings in the early 1960s. That was very enjoyable, friend. Oh, absolutely fascinating. I could so easily live as in a one of those cottages. As a kid, I was aware of the houses in the rocks at Kinver, but um, I think we saw them when I was young. I can't remember. But uh, really interesting and uh, well worth a visit. Yes, and we were just saying that so many boaters must go through and not even know that this is here. Yeah. It's quite a walk from the canal, to be honest, but it's, you it's know... It's well worth it. It's definitely well worth it. Well, I'll tell you something, it's bloody cold. <laughs> Got it's a red what nose the, what's the cold. date today? The it's 10th of June or something <laughs> stupid? And it's freezing. I think we're going to have to go back and light the fire. I know. <laughs> it can't be more than 12 degrees centigrade, can it? It's so cold. Yeah, which is about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. I had the fire alight at one of the cottages and I went and sat by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well worth a visit. Yeah. Kinver Rock Cottages. And Kinver Edge. And Kinver Edge, yeah. National Trust. So we're up there on this seemingly idyllic spot. But Francis is on a mission. What's going on, Fran? I'm furious. <laughs> She's furious, folks. <laughs> I came out, I've become a little bit attached to this woodland that's next to the boat. It's absolutely gorgeous, a little bit of conifer woodland. And you do get to feel a little bit of a sense of ownership sometimes over places so last night I came out with my bag and I filled it with rubbish that had been littered all around and I've just come out with my yoga mat because it is just so lovely and there's all rubbish more rubbish where I've just cleared up last night so the I didn't local hear anything youth have been in here haven't they the youth drinking red striped beer and yeah and cider I just don't get it. I just do not get it. The thing is, if this was your garden and somebody threw rubbish in it, you wouldn't look, just look at it and moan. You'd clear it up. And so I'm beginning to think that we should all have a bit of a sense of ownership of the countryside around us and look at it as ours. And um, Do what you can. Just do what you can. But I didn't even hear anybody in here. The boat is right next to it. So Archie was making a bit of a noise last night, so I think he knew. So what's with the bag on your hand? Well, because a certain son came to visit us a little while ago and dropped my litter picker in the canal. So I um, don't really want to be touching this with my hands, uh, litter picker. So yeah, um, and I'm bringing the yoga mat down and then I'm gonna get my chill back. My, get your chi back. My chi back once I've done this. Do you get a Girl Guides litter bug litter picker upper a badge for this? I don't know what I get, what's that? In there. Look, now I've got a, a glass bottle as well. Um, no, a floating our boat litter picker badge I'll get. So we've got to get rid of that now. Where's the next bin services? Well, there's water ahead. I'm hoping there's rubbish there because it's quite a big bag to carry around with us, isn't it? Mm, stinking. Um, but at least it's not in because there's so much wildlife in here. We've heard mun we, what we think are muntjac deer or water deer. Shouldn't be here anyway. Alien <laughs> species to this country. Yeah, but that's not their fault, is it? <laughs> like, they didn't ask to be here and they're here. We've seen little shrews running around um, and there's so many little burrows and nests. So any animals are going to get caught up. There's a big piece of plastic netting I've picked up in there as well. It's, it's not good. Anyway. That's a nice little bit of woodland, isn't it? That's, oh, it's uh, fabulous. It's all man-made though, isn't it? Man-planted. Yeah, it is. Because they're all in lines, in rows. Yeah. 
but I don't know. I guess I it's, don't know uh, who it belongs to. I guess somebody owns this. This isn't Canal and River Trust, no, I think. I guess but, it's a crop, isn't it? Some um, people are going to yeah. chop down at some point. Maybe. It's, it's open knows? to the canal, and they're obviously happy for people to come in here. And it's just, it is a lovely, peaceful place to sit. Right, we're going to get cruising. Yeah. Well, we've both been really enjoying upping our exercise levels a bit lately. We're walking off the canal a lot more. I'm riding my bike uh, up and down the towpath and around the villages, which is really good for not just for my physical health, but for my noggin. And uh, you've been doing your yoga a lot, haven't you? Yeah, it's not easy on the boat. Obviously, there's certain um, things that I can't do, but when you find a space like this, it's perfect. And it just just stills you, just helps you just to forget everything that's going mm. on around you and stills you. Well, one thing we've both been doing that we really enjoy is meditating. And Fran's been meditating far longer than I have. I've been doing it on and off for about a year or so. But um, it's a really good way, even if it's just for five minutes a day, just to still the mind, forget about what's going on in the world, forget what's going on in your head and what you've got to do and when you should be doing it. It's really good. It's slowing those thoughts down, isn't it? Those, yeah. those crazy two o'clock in the morning <laughs> merry-go-round thoughts. And I've found that the more that you practice during the day, as you say, even just five minutes, mm. you can get better at it. And I'm far from good at it yet. But, I, um, I found I, I did it in the train station the other week. And just, it was busy, lots going on. And I just closed my eyes and for five minutes, just sat there trying to block everything out and just thinking of nothing. It was uh, quite amazing. And what I have found also is I'm waking up less at night, in the middle of the night. I'm not getting up at two or three in the morning because for whatever reason, you can't sleep. And I, I've, I'm sure it's the meditating that's done it. Even yeah. if I just sit on the sofa while Fran's cooking or whatever and just drift into one. And um, I tend to listen great. to meditations. You tend not to, you tend just to sit. And I started off listening to guided meditations. I don't know, I just have to put some music on. But if you can do it and just let the background noise be part of it, yeah. which is easy when there's birds around you, it's not so yeah. easy when you've got dogs barking at you. There's but... <laughs> loads and loads of uh, guiding meditation guiding videos on um, YouTube, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So if you're, for instance, just, just search for meditation for artists, meditation for yoga practice, practice and there'll be loads out there, won't there? And some people you just find re really irritating. Yeah, some voices are really, really irritating. irritating. But all I would say is I've been doing it for years now and just persevere because you do get better at it. It, it becomes a little bit of second nature. Yeah, it does. And um, Your favourite yeah. guy is Eckhart Tolle, isn't it? Eckhart Tolle is my hero, yes. Yeah, no, I'm your hero. How many times a day do I say Eckhart Tolle? Eckhart oh, Tolle says... <laughs> Anyway, I thoroughly recommend it. Five minutes a day, just sitting still in your mind, thinking of nothing if you can, and uh, it's really refreshing. What a couple of old hippies. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please go to floatingourboat.com for more stuff about floating our boat. And here's another video you might like to watch. See you next time.